So I wanted to go ahead and respond to an email on this channel. Now this email is from Nadab and this email reads, Hello Keith, a couple months ago I emailed you regarding assurance and fighting sin and your response was really helpful and I want to thank you for that again. But the reason I'm emailing you again is that over the last month I finally came to the conclusion that I am not actually saved. And this is based on just comparing myself with tests of 1 John and also like you've said, if you can't, if you can't tell the difference between the old man and the new man in Christ, then there's a problem. And although I've seen strongholds of sin broken in my life and have been greatly awakened to these realities over the past year, I don't see in my life the intimate, close walk with the Lord that I see laid out in Scripture and testified to by true believers such as yourself. My question is, how should I seek the Lord daily? So thank you for your email, Nadab. Now, the first thing I want to tackle is the part where you mentioned that you can't distinguish from the old man and the new man. Now, that is a problem because if there is no newness, if there is no putting off, then there's something wrong. Now, what I don't know is how long you've actually been saved. If you tell me that you've been saved for three months, then that may not be the case because true repentance unto life is not an immediate change, okay? As you grow in Christ, you will mature. And over time, you will begin to look different. But if you tell me that you've been saved for two or three years and you see no change and you're unable to distinguish from old and new, then there is a problem. Now, another thing you guys need to be careful about is comparing your spiritual growth to that of famous Christians like Paul Washer or Tim Conway or people on YouTube that you may respect. Because if that were the case, my walk, my personal walk compared to that of a man like Paul Washer would actually look very bad. Okay, Mark 4.20 reads, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Not all true believers will produce the same degree of fervency in regards to their spiritual walk. That's not what you should be focused on. So what are the signs that we should be looking for to determine whether or not we are a new creature in Christ? Okay, that is the question. And I'll always respond to this question with two words, passion and desire. Okay, do you desire to kill sin in your life? Do you desire to be right with God? Are you passionate about his word? Are you in his word daily? Do you desire to fellowship with the Lord in prayer? daily? Are you passionate about the people of God? Do you desire to see people saved? Do you desire to fellowship with God's people? Now, if you tell me that you don't see these realities in your life, then there's only two things you can do. One, you can do nothing and go to hell. Or two, you can cry out to God until he saves you. Now, it's a good thing, Nadab, okay? It's a good thing that you are worried about these things. Seems to me that the Lord may be stirring your affections, okay? Now, you mentioned in your email that you have seen strongholds of sins broken in your life, but that you don't see the intimate closeness that you see in other believers. Now, it could be that you are indeed actually saved, but are just comparing your life and your spiritual walk to that of others who are much more mature or godly than you, and that causes you to doubt your own testimony. Now, be very careful of doing that, okay? Focus on your walk. Now, I'll leave it with this. You better be in the word of God every single day and on your knees in prayer every single day, okay? You better be killing sin daily. Don't talk to me about being a Christian and these things are not true about your life. And if it's not true of your life, you better run to Christ until it is true. Now, to see Christ is to look unto Jesus, but you can't look unto Jesus if you don't know him. So to see Christ is to read his word and to believe what you read. Faith come by hearing and hearing through the word of God. Some Christians that I know struggle with assurance and knowing that they are saved. So how can a Christian know that he is saved? Well, first of all, let me just say that I hear that question a lot. And I, uh, it's, it's a crucial question. It's not just an abstract uh, theological uh, curiosity. It has to do with your very status before God. You want to know for sure that you're in the kingdom of God. And Peter tells us that we are to make our election and our calling sure for the purpose of growth in our sanctification, because if we're not sure where our standing is before God, then we're tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, we're unstable in all of our ways. And so I just want to underscore how important that question is. Now there's, I come out of two ways, one theological, the other one very practical. I'll start with a practical one. When people ask me, how can I know if I'm saved? I ask them, do you love the biblical Christ perfectly? And almost every time, I've only had one uh, practicing perfectionist answer it differently, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, almost every time the people will look at me and say, no, I don't love him perfectly. And I say, okay, well, the second question is this. Do you love him as much as you should love him? 
Well, obviously, if they answered yes to the first question, they have to answer yes again. I said, okay, so now they're just, that whatever assurance they might be had is starting to dissolve away just by these questions. I said, let me ask you the third question. This is a critical question. Do you love the biblical Jesus at all? Do you have any affection in your heart for the Christ of the New Testament? And if they say yes to that, then I can say, okay, how can you possibly have any affection for Jesus unless you were born of the Holy Spirit? And you couldn't be born of the Holy Spirit unless you were elect. And if you are elect, then you can be sure of your status before God. Now, that's where, the, where your whole doctrine of justification, your doctrine of election, and all of that theological uh, content comes into play. Because I know that I couldn't love Jesus unless I were reborn. And I couldn't re be reborn unless God has sovereignly chosen to give me the gift of regeneration. And so there my theology supports my confidence that he will finish what he has started and that uh, I can have my full trust in, in my salvation.